How will you change the way that the city is run? You know, it's really it's a fresh start. I think one of the things that uh, when the mayor elect asked me to serve was that it was a, kind, of, kind of be an apolitical or a you know results oriented administration. Two major announcements from Spokane Mayor-elect Nadine Woodward. Tonight, she tells us her plans ahead of her swearing-in ceremony. Expect slick conditions for your Thursday morning commute and plenty of snow across the mountain passes. But first, a historic day in our nation. The President of the United States has been impeached for now only the third time in history. The President of the United States should be tried. And the question is now whether Senator McConnell will allow a fair trial in the Senate. Reaction is pouring in from both sides. We take a close look at what's next. We're taking a live look outside right now. We're expecting a good amount of snow in the inland northwest. Nothing quite yet, but that will change overnight. Thanks so much for staying up late with us tonight. I'm Tim Pham. Let's get right to meteorologist Michelle Boss. Michelle, how will all of this snow impact the morning commute? Well, the thing is, we're not expecting a lot of snow by early tomorrow morning. We're looking at light amounts. As we take a look at the graphic right now, we're looking at one to two inches in the Spokane area, maybe an inch more in Coeur d'Alene. But it's the fact that it's going to be falling overnight with those colder temperatures and right around that morning commute time, we'll have some light snow on the roads. So slick roads are going to be an issue tomorrow morning. You'll want to give yourself some extra time. Also, this is going to be round one of a two round storm system that's going to bring more snow to the mountains and to the northern valleys Thursday night into Friday, and that's going to really ramp up those snow amounts. While places like Spokane and areas south of I-90 are going to see a transition from snow to rain. So winter storm warnings for the areas in pink, and you can see heavy snow expected for the mountains. The northern Cascades are going to see two to four feet in those higher elevations. Uh, down towards uh, the Wenatchee area and then even down towards Yakima, a little bit of ice mixing in tomorrow morning. And then across northeastern Washington and north Idaho, we're looking at one to two feet of snow in the mountains. Uh, fortunately, those valley locations, at least in the next 24 hours, not looking at really heavy snow and actually hasn't even gotten started yet, uh, except starting to push east of the Cascades just into the Moses Lake area. It'll still be a couple of hours before it reaches Spokane, but temperatures definitely cold enough to make some slick conditions. Lower 20s in Deer Park and Coeur d'Alene, 26 in Spokane. Here's a look at the next three days. Still season cool tomorrow, 36 degrees with snow and then some rain and snow. But Friday and Saturday, just plain old rain, windy on Friday, highs in the mid 40s and continued mild on Saturday with highs in the mid 40s. All right, Michelle, thank you. Tonight, Congress made history by voting to impeach President Donald Trump. He is now the third president in U.S. history to be impeached. The vote was split along party lines, though two Democrats joined Republicans in voting no on Article 1, abuse of power, and three Democrats voted no on Article 2, obstruction of Congress. December 18th, a great day for the Constitution of the United States. A sad one for America that the president's reckless activities necessitated us uh, our having to introduce articles of impeachment. Meanwhile, at a rally tonight, President Trump warned that his impeachment could lead to other presidents being prematurely impeached. Now, anybody that becomes, you know, this was a, this is a sacred position. Anybody that becomes president, I mean, they could have a phone call and they get impeached. So what's next? The articles of impeachment will now go to the Senate where they will hold a trial. That's expected to take place in January. But President Trump will remain in office unless the Senate votes to convict him. The next mayor of Spokane will be sworn in in less than two weeks. Nadine Woodward will have a ceremony at the pavilion on December 30th. And today she announced a big hire, the new city administrator. Our political reporter Casey Decker spoke with both of them today. The first step of any new mayor, hiring the staff. Nadine Woodward so far is retaining most of David Condon's key people. Well, it's the same staff. So these are people who have been in these positions in acting roles, some of them for up to a year. Were there any new people that you brought on board other than Wes? Wes is the first. Oh. Yeah. Wes Crago is the new city administrator, replacing Teresa Sanders. He comes from Afreda, where he was a teacher, a longtime city council member, and their city administrator. How will you change the way that the city is run? You know, it's really it's a fresh start. I think mm -hmm. one of the things that uh, when the mayor elect asked me to serve was that it was a kind of kind of be an apolitical or a you know results oriented administration. The first result they want: keeping the downtown crime rate dropping. This year, it already fell 14% compared to last. 
And I'm glad to hear that those numbers are going down, but we still have a lot of room for improvement. She hopes to do that by immediately fulfilling one of her main campaign promises. We're making progress on the police precinct moving back into the core of downtown. I mean, we haven't even been, it's t uh, a week and a half before I'm sworn in, and we've already made great progress. So. It's impressive for this early in an administration, but uh, there's uh, buildings kind of pretty tentatively identified, that's solidifying, mm -hmm. uh, early architectural plans, there'll yep. be more meetings this afternoon. Uh, working on outfitting that building. The police department has been a part of that, and so is the city council. They say they'll announce that building once it's more finalized. Another key issue will be homelessness, with Woodward becoming mayor in the middle of winter. She's also taking over shortly after the Supreme Court announced it will not hear an important case about anti-camping laws. That means the current ruling will stand and cities cannot enforce ordinances like no sit, no lie, unless they provide enough shelter for everyone. How will that affect your decision making once you take office? Well, it's going to affect every city yeah. in the Ninth Circuit, yeah. and uh, all, everyone's been watching that closely. Well, it, it'll give us more guidance, and that's what I wanted. I wanted more guidance moving forward, what we can and cannot do, and now we know. And moving forward, a big thing certainly seems to be improving cooperation between the council and the mayor. Even though the council is overwhelmingly liberal and Woodward leans conservative, she says she wants to focus on common ground. That downtown precinct is a good example. Multiple council members, including the incoming president, have indicated that's something they're interested in, too. In the studio, Casey Decker. Crem 2 News. Casey, thank you. Meanwhile, Washington Governor Jay Inslee wants to spend more than $300 million from the state's emergency budget reserve to add 2,100 shelter beds and provide help to Washingtonians combating homelessness. He unveiled the supplemental budget today, saying Washington must do more to find housing for its residents. Inslee says Washington has the fifth highest per capita rate of homelessness. He emphasized the homelessness crisis is not just an urban or western Washington problem. The impact spans statewide. Well, on to sports. It was a highly anticipated matchup between Gonzaga men's basketball and North Carolina. Tonight, the Zags dominated in the 94-81 win. Brenna Green and Karthik Venkatraman join us to tell us how the Zags' high-powered offense helped them beat the Tar Heels. This was a beat up North Carolina team that came into the kennel, but still Karthik, a win over North Carolina is a win over North Carolina. That is a storied program, a big time program dub for GU this evening. You talk about how they were a little beaten and battered coming into this game, but North Carolina kept it pretty close in the second half. It was a five point game there in the second half at 44-39 with about 17 minutes ago. But that's when Gonzaga just started shooting the lights out of the ball. 72% from the field in the second half. They led by as many as 23 points. It was just a phenomenal performance as they pulled away to win this game. Yeah, Gonzaga shot 60% from the field for the game and shot 50% from three. Those are incredible numbers. Here's the team talking about this huge dub for the program. Yeah, it was pretty good. Good revenge. Uh, the guys from last year already were, were texting thanks for the for the revenge, so it was it was fun to 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 beat them. Feels great, like coach said. Every win against North Carolina is a good win, like wherever, whenever, however they look. So uh, I mean, it's, it's huge for Gonzaga, for you know us, just giving us confidence. It was like coach said, you know, one of the best runs we ever had in the non-conference schedule. So I mean, huge win, great great job so far. We just got finished two more games. We can't let up, but it's a just huge motivation for us. Karthik, I can't help but indulge myself in a good rhyme here. Uh, the story of the game was Corey. Corey Kispert, 26 points tonight, 10 of 12 shooting, 5 of 6 from the field, a masterful performance for him. You could tell he was feeling it too. He had that one electrifying one-handed slam that was just spectacular. And then he had a three-pointer that gave him 26 where he just kind of shrugged. It was kind of one of those Jordan shrugs, like, I know I'm hot and I'm doing well. He KO'd North Carolina there in the second half. To say the least, he had some fun out there this evening. <laughs> it was a blast. How can you not have fun in a place like this? And uh, Beating Carolina is always nice, you know, kind of having the monkey off your back. I was in the zone, kind of things were really feeling really slow, hoop felt big, um, you know, and it helped that the atmosphere was like it was. Um, didn't wasn't hard for us to get up for this kind of a game. It was great, it was great, like, Corey was just, in the zone tonight and we were just feeding him and he would just keep shooting so it was it was just great for the team and and it's it's so easy when you got Corey shooting like that and playing like that so it's just easier for, for a team. 
Karthik, in the game of basketball, both teams play with five players on the court. Yeah, that's usually that, right. is the rule. that is the rule, uh, but it felt like six tonight for the Zags because the kennel was so loud. Yeah, from the jump, it was just absolutely blaring loud. I thought I was going to need earmuffs at one point from that first and one from Philip Petrushev. You could just hear the place rocking. Then there were timely shots from the guys that really got this crowd going. But, you know, just even before the game, you could feel the buzz. And then it actually went on. I got chills through it. The players had some pretty high praise for the crowd this evening. Far and away the best we've ever had. I was sitting with uh, Harrison or Garrison Brooks on the free throw line and he like kind of was looking at me with like his wide eyes and he's like, wow, you guys are really are out here. And like he was really impressed, I think, at the energy we had in our building. And um, first time for Spokane was, was, was pretty cool for him, I guess. It was crazy. It was, it was, uh, it really helped us for this win. So yeah, it was the craziest ever we ever seen. And, it really helps us like that. Yeah. We did ask Mark Few in his postgame presser the status of Anton Watson. He did not play tonight due to that shoulder continually popping out of socket during the Arizona game last weekend. He didn't give us a ton of specifics, but he did say that Anton's in a lot of pain. They just want to give him some time to rest and hopefully get that shoulder stronger so that that doesn't lead to an even more serious injury. Yeah, best to him. And obviously Gonzaga's next game is going to be against Eastern Washington this Saturday. They're going to be in the kennel. That's going to be another tough contest for the Zags. The Eagles are a tough team. That game is going to be at 2 p.m. Reporting in the kennel, I'm Brenna Green. He's Karthik Venkatraman, Crim2 Sports. Well, a sign on Government Way in Hayden has drawn a lot of attention. It claims a Chick-fil-A could soon be coming to the area. So we wanted to verify, is it true or just a prank? The answer when we come back.